Welcome aboard the KC-46. I'm Sean Martin from Boeing's uh, business development team for the KC-46. I'm the captain team lead for the Middle East. Um, and we're pretty excited. We've got the KC-46 here at Dubai, and uh, we're, we're allowing folks to come through the airplane and see its awesome capabilities. You know, the airplane itself is built for the United States government as a purpose-built airplane. It supports their need to project forces throughout the world as an air refueling tanker, but more importantly, when it's done doing that, it can carry passengers, carry patients in emergency situations, and cargo. You know, an example of that would be in a humanitarian event. So we're pretty proud of the airplane and how it performs, and we'll walk through the airplane and talk a little bit about it. So the KC-46 has the capability to carry up to 200 passengers on board. What you're looking at right now are passenger seats that are loaded on the main deck of the airplane. What makes the KC-46 so important as a, as a, as a multiple role airplane is the fact that you can reconfigure it from a passenger mission to a cargo mission to a medevac mission in under two hours. That capability is huge when you're trying to deploy around the world and move uh, through different parts of the world and onload and offload cargo passengers as well as be a tank. We're good to start. Okay. So right now we're standing on the main deck of the airplane. The main deck of the airplane has the capability to carry a significant amount of cargo on the deck. It carries 18 U.S. Air Force or NATO level 463IL pallets on the main deck and over 65,000 pounds of cargo. As I talked about earlier, it's about being able to reconfigure. So if you look on the aircraft, you'll notice that if on this airplane they've got some equipment that they're using to maintain the airplane in, the, in this area. They have in front uh, a demonstration of the medevac capability. And we can walk up in that area if you see. The aircraft itself can carry up to 654 of these litter stations on board to be able to move patients around the world wherever we need to move them to. That capability is a game changer for the U.S. Air Force because traditionally, and many nations uh, have specific cargo aircraft that carry a big amount of cargo, i.e. Uh, or wheel vehicles or tanks, and, and having to tie up those vehicles to carry general cargo is a bad thing. So having a KC-46 that can carry all of those other items, the water, the rations, uh, humanitarian aid throughout the world, as well as carry patients anywhere in the world that you need to, again, makes this airplane a new way of thinking. It's a new way of deploying for the U.S. Air Force, and we're just excited that they're, they're able to do that right now. So right now, we're standing in the, in the front of the cargo compartment, and why this is important is this cavernous cargo door that's located on the left side of the airplane. That door allows us to carry cargo that's over 220 inches long or up to 96 inches high uh, and load it through that door and put it into the aircraft and into the positions on the aircraft. All of the KC-46s that are built come with this capability on board, with cargo doors, with, with freighter floors in them already, and the capability to, on day one, do all of those different missions. This is the KC-46 air refueling operator station. This is where the tanker mission of the KC-46 is accomplished. There's one crew member, he's called a boom operator or an air refueling operator that flies right in this position on the aircraft. In that position, he flies an air refueling boom or operates the air refueling drogues on the aircraft that hook up to other types of aircraft uh, and pass fuel at altitude. And when we talk about passing fuel at fuel altitude, we're talking about at speeds up to 350 knots, and then as slow as 180 knots, and then from surface up to 35,000 feet. 
So again, the airplane is extremely capable and it's built on day one to be a tanker and then to do the cargo passenger dual role mission. The other part of this airplane that for the United States Air Force and other countries that are that are interoperating, interoperating with the US government is the capability for it to be connected. And what I mean by that is the aircraft has a significant communication suite and the ability to interrelate with the command and control elements around the world with state-of-the-art electronics and data link on board the aircraft. This is the KC-46 flight deck uh, on board the aircraft. And what I like to talk about when I talk about the connection of the airplane and how it's connected in the world that it operates in and how we modernized our flight deck to be the state of the art from a 767 standpoint is the use of these very large 15 inch displays on board the aircraft. They allow for the crew to have excellent cues as to the aircraft system performances on board the aircraft, the navigation, as well as the connection to a tactical situational awareness system on the airplane. As you can see, it looks very similar to other 767 products, but it's so much more in, the, in its connection and its ability to continue to fly, fight, and work throughout the world. It's a great jet. I've been flying it for about uh, two years now. I transitioned from the KC-135 and the, you know, it's just night and day between the KC-135 and the KC-46. Uh, going from an aircraft that's 50, 60 years old uh, to now a state-of-the-art, uh, you know, large displays and uh, you know, it's night and day about it. Do you like air refueling with it? I do. Um, you know what, the biggest thing I like to say, you know, when I talk about transitioning between the airframes, this one has a cup holder. It's just these little crew comforts that uh, really make the difference, you know, that allows us to, you know, to do those long missions and you're not totally frazzled by the end of it. Have you been a receiver pilot behind the case of 46 yet or not? I'm not officially qualified, but I have done some receiver work. Um, How does the airplane handle behind the case of 46? Uh, behind another 46, it's I would say it's a lot easier to feel behind another 46 versus another 135. Um, you know, it's just all about fine movements and you know just kind of getting up there, stabilizing. But I would say it's relatively easy once you get the hang of it.